chapter one, Remembered. I knew it would begin with the end, and the end would look like death to these eyes. I had been warned. Not these eyes, my eyes, mine. This was me now. The language I found myself using was odd. It's fine. 
second, my revulsion pulled me away from the memory. A high shrill keening pierced my ears and pulsed in my head. The sound scraped through my airways. There was a weak pain in my throat. Screaming, my body explained, you're screaming. I froze in shock, and the sound broke off abruptly. This was not a memory. My body, she was thinking, speaking to me. But the memory was stronger in that moment than my astonishment. Please, they cried. There is danger ahead. The danger is behind. I scream back in my mind, but I see what they mean. A feeble stream of light coming from who knows where shines on the end of the hall. It is not the flat wall or the locked door, the dead end I feared and expected. It is a black hole, an elevator shaft, abandoned, empty, and condemned like this building, once a hiding place, now a tomb. A surge of relief floods through me as I race forward. There is no way, no way to survive. But perhaps a way to win. No, no, no. This thought was all mine, and I had fought to pull myself away from her, but we were together, and we sprinted for the edge of death. Please, the shouts are more desperate. I feel like laughing when I know that I am fast enough. I imagine their hands clutching for me just inches behind my back, but I am fast as I need to be. I don't even pause at the end of the floor. The hole rises up to meet me mid-stride. The emptiness swallows me. My legs flail, useless. My hands grip the air, claw through it, searching for anything solid. Cold blows past me like tornado winds. I hear the thud before I feel it. The wind is gone. And the pain is everywhere. Pain is everything. Make it stop. Not high enough, I whisper to myself through the pain. When will the pain end? When? The blackness swallowed up the agony, and I was weak with gratitude that the memory had come to this most final of conclusions. Blackness took all, and I was free. I took a breath to steady myself, as was this body's habit, my body. But then the color rushed back. The memory reared up and engulfed me again. No, I panicked, fearing the cold and the pain and the very fear itself. But this was not the same memory. This was a memory within a memory. A final memory, like a last gasp of air, yet somehow even stronger than the first. The blackness took all but this, a face. The face was as alien to me as the faceless serpentine tentacles of my last host body would be to this new body. I'd seen this kind of face in the images I had been given to prepare for this world. It was hard to tell apart to see the tiny variations in color and shape that were the only markers of the individual. So much the same, all of them. Noses centered in the middle of the sphere, eyes above the mouths, below, ears around the sides, a collection of senses, all but touch, concentrated in one place. Skin over bones, hair growing on the crown, and in a strange fury lines above the eyes. Some had more through the brown scale from pale cream to a deep, almost black. Aside from that, how to know one from the other? This face I would have known among millions. This face was a hard rectangle, the shape of the bones strong under the skin, in color 
was me 